everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Amateur Hour Sports Podcast. My name is Jacob. Joining me today is Isaac again. And for a podcast debut, we got Nihon on the show for the very first time. How's it going? Pretty good. How are you guys doing? <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about the most dominant NBA player of all time. There is not like too many names I think you can throw into this category. But, I mean, Chuck Hayes, it's going to be a quick podcast, guys. <laughs> Chuck Hayes, that. But we'll go into it um, right away. Uh, actually, I want to get Neon's take first of all, since this is his first time on the podcast. Neon, who do you deem to be the most dominant NBA player of all time? Um, so, first person that comes to mind is Giannis. Giannis. Really? And second person is Shaq. Shaq? I'm saying Shaq and Giannis are like the two most dominant. Um, mainly because, like, Giannis doesn't have a shot, and you still can't stop him. This guy's still scoring 30 a game, and he can't shoot from outside, like, 15 feet consistently, Mm -hmm. right? So, once he gets that shot, I don't know how you're going to stop him. No. And I think, like, like it's over for the league. I mean, this year he's shooting almost 33% from three so far. And knowing his work ethic, like, he's going to get there. He's going to average 40% eventually. (laughs) I I agree. I think right now, Giannis is not the most dominant NBA player of all time. But at some point in the future, I think when he gets that three-point shot, when he gets that, like, a a mid-range shot that's, you know, suitable to to be serviceable in the NBA, I think he he will be that. At the moment... I think Will Chamberlain is the most dominant player of all time. Like, the numbers that this guy put up, he averaged 50 points one season, 50.4 points per game over, he played 80 games that season, averaged over 25 rebounds that season as well. The lowest amount of rebounds he ever averaged in an NBA season is 18.2. His block stats, they only recorded, because block stats were recorded at the time, but based on, like, game footage that they have, In the 112 games of his career, in a career which he played over 1,000, those games that were recorded, he averaged 8.8 blocks per game. (laughs) So, like, the amount of triple doubles, quadruple doubles this guy would have been putting up in his age, because he was an assist leader at center. He's the only one in NBA history to be an assist leader from the center position. He's right, like, I don't believe any of that, man. Why don't you believe it? No, I believe it. Like, I know it happened, but there's no way someone could be that... Much better than the rest That's of the league. That's what I'm saying. This, this like, it just doesn't dominant. make sense. They have the footage to prove it. Like, it's there. All the proof is there that he was as like, dominant. He's, he's, I guess. He's yeah, an yeah. 11 time I'm rebound. I'm going to argue it. I, I also agree that, yeah. They literally had to tinker NBA rules around this guy. Like, because of him, you can't uh, shoot a free throw only off the backboard. It has to hit the rim for it to count because he used to just oop it off the backboard to himself from the free throw line because it was just insane this guy was you can no longer throw an inbound over the backboard because they would literally just toss Al you to him from the inbound and you couldn't stop him because of how dominant this guy was like yeah. from, from everything like he averaged 30 points a game over his career and where he like feigned off near the end he was a 13 time all-star he only played 14 seasons and in the one year he wasn't an all-star he only played 12 games but every other every other year he played at least 70 72 games. Just, this guy's just a monster. Like, you literally couldn't stop. Okay, he, if you disregard Wilt, because his stats are like, like just double I mean, if, I, mean else. I guess like it's a it's, scoring era. Okay. If yeah, it's, if, like if you, because, like, his numbers are out of this world. Like, you can't really argue anyone else if you have Okay, Wilt. so, other so than I Wilt. I that Wilt's probably the most dominant. Other than Wilt. But if you disregard him, I what think, would you say? like, I mean, I think there's a case for... I mean, I think it's Shaq, but there's a case for Giannis, but I don't think he's there yet. Like I said, I think he will be there at some point. There's a case for Giannis. I think there's a case for Kareem, and I think there's a big case for Bill Russell because Bill Russell played in the same era as Wilt Chamberlain, but Bill Russell has 11 NBA championships in those 13 seasons. So if Bill Russell was so... Or if Will Chamberlain was so much better than Bill Russell, why did Bill Russell constantly win in the Will Chamberlain era? You know what I mean? Like, did he have uh, a better team? I mean, he played Boston, but like, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, obviously the team is better, but that would be the matchup if they're playing against each other, yeah. the two centers, right? And then, yeah. I mean, Bill Russell put up some crazy stats, and he never quite got like the, the level of points he put up, like 
19 points per game in his in his best season, but his rebounds were always at least like the lowest he ever recorded for rebounds in a season was 18.6, and his blocks are ridiculous as well. Um, they didn't record it in that era, right? Like I said, but he averaged apparently between seven to nine blocks per game over his career. So that is just ridiculous numbers as well. But for me, I'm going Shaq because along with like the dominance that he displayed, like rebounding wise, defensively, he had scoring championships to his name. He had two scoring championships without a free throw. I think if like the projected Shaq output for points, if he averaged 70% from the line instead of his career 52.7, he would have had, I think, six scoring champs if he, if he could hit his free throws. And if he could hit his free throws, he probably would put up more points because he wouldn't yeah. be able to foul him as much, right? Yeah. But just off the free throws alone going up to 70%. Yeah. And even just watching like the game, like Shaq, like, you couldn't stop Shaq. Like, no. No big man no. in the league could stop You literally him. had to foul out <laughs> yeah. in, in like... Like, especially in that, like, I guess his prime when he three-peated with the Lakers. Yeah. Like, I remember in the the Philadelphia series, because they didn't really have people to compete with the Lakers, it was just AI going to town. Like, the bigs literally had to foul out. Like, they even had Dikembe Mutombo guarding him, and Dikembe mm-hmm. Mutombo fouled out trying to guard him uh, in yeah. game one of that series. Just, you literally can't stop him, whether it's, like, it, like it, you had to foul him. And just, you, you're fortunate that... He couldn't shoot from the free throw line. You know what I mean? And the case for Kareem is that, I mean, I mean, his, his point output is something. His 19 times in the All-Star game is something. But, like, he had literally the only move in the NBA you couldn't stop. If he, he could literally, like, give you a letter before the game saying, I'm going to do, I'm going to skyhook over you, and there's nothing you can do about it. He would literally tell you, but you still couldn't stop it because it was so unstoppable. Right? Yeah. Isaac, do you have a take to give? In this uh, discussion? I mean, you kind of really took my answer and ran with it, had the entire discussion I felt I was going to have here. Um, my answer from the get-go is always going to be Wilt, uh, for, for the exact same reasons that you listed, right? Uh, you look at him relative to his era, uh, even still, with uh, his teammates and his opponents being not great, the fact that he was just seven leagues above them is insane yeah and and because of that like that would make him the most dominant there because there was nothing anybody could do to stop him whatsoever he was just that much better than literally yeah, I, I, everybody another else another stat i have on wilt is that like james harden just hit his fourth 60 point game like uh, about a month ago which is third in the NBA on the all-time list. He's tied with Michael Jordan and Elgin Baylor. Oh, no, sorry. He's one behind Jordan. He's tied with Elgin Baylor for fourth on the list. But Kobe Bryant in second was sixth, and Will Chamberlain's in first was 32 60-point games. Like, there's nothing you can do about that. It's, you can say it's, it's insane. Any hours are, I'm sorry, he put up 101 game, right? Yeah, like, you can say the league wasn't as good, and you'd be right about that. I mean, oh, you're right. Oh, absolutely. Look, look, at, the, look at the guys that were <laughs> starting. Yeah, there's some right? farmers, and he was just so much taller than everyone. Yeah, and, and, and it was a scoring even, era as Yeah, well. but even yeah. still, with that... No, why, like, you can say that, but why, if, sorry, if that's the case, why wasn't anybody else even putting up numbers close to that yeah. in that era, right? Like, he was just mm-hmm. so much better. Yeah, like, his stats were absurd, but, like, no one else's were, so, like, yeah, exactly, there's right? definitely something about him yeah, that was, it's, like, crazy. It's, yeah, it's not like uh, when you have trends in scoring where league-wide scoring goes up, mm-hmm. where you can pick and choose a couple guys from each era who scored Similarly, and you go, okay, yeah. Yeah, this like, like this one, there's a lot of guys putting exactly, up like right? 30 points. And game. vice versa, when there's dead scoring and guys aren't putting up as many points except for the All-Stars, right? This guy was putting up like 50 more points than everybody else yeah. <laughs> on a regular basis. That's absurd. Yeah. I, I mean, Bill Russell, like I said, I mean, he dominated kind of championships maybe because of the team and his reboundings were close. But they weren't even quite yeah. that level of Bill Chamberlain. Bill Russell, his his the most he ever put up per game points wise was nineteen. Like I said, Bill Russell, sorry, Will Chamberlain. If you exclude his last two seasons where he he kind of fell off, the lowest amount of points he put up per game is twenty, twenty point five to be exact. So you literally were not stopping Will Chamberlain from getting and and the NBA literally changed rules. 
because of how good he was. I know there's some other players in that case, but like they had to change the way they they played in the NBA because of how good Wilt Chamberlain was and that how good he was and that it, like it wasn't even fair how good this guy was. But I'll go back to Giannis. Like he's averaging 30 points per game this season. He's averaging uh, almost 13 rebounds. He's shooting 33% from three. He's taking five threes a game. So he's clearly not afraid to shoot. And we know, like, just with the amount of, the, the significance in his jumps over the years, he's going yeah. to get that three-point shot at some point. And, like, yeah. there are there are a little bit of kind of hints that that's going to come. Like, if you watch the Lakers game, the Bucks lakers game, I think he was five, he hit five yeah, for eight. Yeah, like five for eight, yeah. So, like, he would really airball one. Next play, he would three feet behind the arc would pull up and he'd yeah. swish it like literally the next play. So you know this guy doesn't care about missing. You know he doesn't. You know he's a workhorse mm-hmm. and he doesn't really care what you think about his game. He's just gonna do his own thing. So I mean, he's he's gonna be putting up like mid thirties, I think, at some point in his career. Yeah. Like you can't stop him. You can. You literally can't stop him. And that's what I'm saying. Like with Giannis, Shaq, and like I haven't watched much tape from Wilt's era, but like the stats probably prove that point enough but like with Shaq and Giannis like you can't guard him like teams struggle to stop him like the only team that stopped Giannis is Toronto and that's because they had Kawhi like, yeah and <laughs> so, Kawhi is just like a like, special Kawhi's, defender yeah Kawhi is another level of defender so like that's what I mean by like they're both so dominant that uh, like teams themselves couldn't stop these players and they would just do what they wanted to do on the court no matter what like you could like game you plan could, as much as you, you could, but you have to dedicate your whole team yeah, defense to stopping like, this one guy. Exactly. You know what I mean? So like, it's crazy. Okay, well, we'll end it there. We we're all. I mean, Will Chamberlain's so dominant that you have to have an argument about everybody else involved. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? It's like a second place race. So here. <laughs> yeah, it's a race for second place. But that'll wrap up this episode. Thank you for listening. Thank you to Nihon for being on for the first time. You can follow us at Amateur PDC on Twitter and Instagram. Subscribe on YouTube and Spotify. Amateur Sports. And we post every single day, so we'll see you tomorrow for another episode.